Hi, this is session nine of Apache Edge course for beginners. In this session, we will learn about how to call a web API service endpoint to authenticate user from Apache Edge. If user is authenticated successfully, then we will generate access token based on password grant type. On the other hand, if authentication fails, then let's throw a custom error message stating that authentication failed from Apache Edge to the client application. In case if you haven't subscribed our channel so far, please click the button below to subscribe and turn on the bell icon to get more videos from our channel. All right, let's flip to Visual Studio and start creating a simple endpoint to authenticate user credentials. So I've flipped to Visual Studio and I've created a simple WPP project. And now let's go ahead and create a controller. Let's right click on controllers, hide controller. So we are going to create AP controller. So let's select AP controller iPhone empty template. Let's click hide. So I'm going to call our controller, name it as login controller. So let's provide login and click hide. This will create the login controller for us. This is taking a while. Apologies for the delay. all right now login controller is created inside this login controller let's create a simple method to validate user credentials so i'm going to create an endpoint public by action result so let's call this endpoint as our and ticket user so before that let's go ahead and create a class to pass user credentials so i'm going to call the class as user credential initialize the properties which we need so we will pass username oops so username data type is string so we will pass username and password So we are going to pass username and password from the payload. So let's have this user credentials as input to our endpoint method. So here, if, so I'm just going to uh, add code the username and password. Uh, usually uh, we authenticate uh, this thing using any database services. So here uh, for, for our demo session, I'm just going to add code username and password. So user credential dot username. Username is a PG demo. And user credential dot password. 
equals apg demo add on to d both username and password matches then let's return okay and also return the user credentials back if not then return not found result which is one of four will get so this is the simple endpoint which will authenticate the user credentials if username matches with apg demo and if password matches with apg demo at 123 this will give 200 otherwise it will give 404 from the server all right so let's go ahead and test this endpoint first from postman tool so let's run our webbp project all right so to test this let's flip to postman tool and the verb has to be post so let's change the verb it to post before running our application so let's let's provide the verb http post and the route name is validate user with these changes let's go ahead and run click to postman and change the verb to post our endpoint is http colon double slash localhost colon our port number is 51360 slash api slash our controller name is login slash our route name is validate user so that is our endpoint here we'll have to pass the input so which is Username apg demo password apg demo at one to the I'm passing now. So our application is running and listening. Let's give the request from Postman and let's see what we get. We're getting phone of four. Why are we getting phone of four? Let's trace the request and see. Alright, let's give the request and yeah, we are getting apg demo 123 apg demo 23 so username is passing as apg demo 23 so which is not matching with apg demo that's why we get the phone of four so which makes sense since we are passing the wrong username so it gives phone of four on the other hand if we pass the correct username we should get 200 okay here we go we are getting 200 okay and we are getting the user details back from the web api method so our endpoint is working fine now how to call this endpoint from apg edge in order to authenticate and if the user credentials are valid then we'll have to create or generate a access token based on password grant type so how to achieve that so we'll see how to achieve that let's log into happy ghui click ap proxies here we'll have all the ap proxies available which we have created already and if you could see AP proxy demo is the AP proxy which we have been using in our course so far. So in this example also we'll use the same example. Let's click on it.
and navigate to develop tab so or to if the endpoint which we are using to generate access tokens and generate access token iphone password flow is the one which we are using to generate access token based on password grant type so this is the flow which we have been using from previous session so here we are extracting user credentials from body and here we are checking whether username and password has the proper value and if not then we are uh, validating it and throwing invalid request response back to the client app and here we are checking the password grant type if grant type is not password then we are sending invalid grant type back to the client application so after this step we will have to call our backend api service which is this one to authenticate our credentials if credentials are valid then we'll have to generate access token if not we'll have to give error message back to the client application how can we do that okay so in order to call any backend api services we will have to use the policy called service caller so let's go ahead and add service caller policy in policy section click plus icon and add service caller here we go this is service caller so let's name it as sc hyphen validate user so we are going to use HTTP, uh, HTTP protocol. So let's select HTTP and add. So this will add a service caller policy with a default properties. So here we'll have to modify based on our requirement. So here in the request section, We would need set tag inside text. We would need headers inside it. Does you need to add a header? Header name with does accept. So this is going to be application slash JSON. So our backend will accept application slash JSON header. And next we'll have to add verb to it. So that's going to be post. And we'll have to provide the payload to our endpoint. So let's add payload. In the payload we will have to uh, pass username and username and password so let's go ahead and provide username and password and here we'll have to specify the name But here we'll have to specify a uh, variable prefix and variable suffix so let's go ahead and provide that so i'm giving variable suffix equals again we'll see uh, what is variable suffix and variable prefix in our uh, upcoming videos but for now let's understand we'll have to provide variable suffix and variable prefix here so variable suffix i'm going to provide a uh, hash and variable prefix i'm going to provide at and here we have to say content type so this is going to be application 
slash json and here we'll have to provide username so here we'll have to provide the prefix symbol and the suffix symbol so i'm providing prefix symbol add and username hash so the same way for password add password hash so this is the uh, response variable so we can provide any meaningful name we want for now uh, i'm giving as a call out response and uh, this is the url our endpoint url we ha will have to give our endpoint url so we cannot provide our local host endpoint url here so we'll only apache edge will look for the endpoint which is available on the internet so it, it cannot look for the locust local host URLs. so we'll have to expose our local host to the internet if you haven't watched our uh, video to expose local host web server to the internet i would strongly recommend you to watch so let's go ahead and, and uh, you know expose our local host web server to the internet now so in order to do that we would need uh, ng rock so let's go ahead and uh, open ng rock now So we have opened up ngrock command prompt in order to expose our local web server to the internet we will need this command ngrock space http space iphone post iphone header equals within double quotes we'll have to provide our local host colon the port number on which our application is running so our port number is this 51360 so we will have to provide that port number 51360 and close the double quotes and again we'll have to provide the same port number here 51360 with this command let's hit enter this will expose our local web server to the internet. So first, let's test that whether it's working or not. So let's copy this HTTPS URL. Let's copy and test it via Postman. Instead of localhost URL, I'm going to give the ng rock url which is available in the internet so let's give send button with this request so our request is coming so it is working properly if you could see uh, we are getting the response back and before that let's disable this endpoint and if i'm giving any invalid username so we're getting 404 so our endpoint is exposed to internet now and it is available public publicly so now let's go ahead and uh, do the backward changes at happy edge let's navigate to happy edge Maybe to happy GH and provide the endpoints here. So our endpoint is this one. So let's copy and provide it here. So now we have uh, added service caller policy to call our endpoint to send username and password to our endpoint to validate it. So once it is validated, we will get the response here in call out response variable so if the status code is 200 then it is valid and we'll have to create access token on the other hand if the status code 
is not 200 then it means the username or password is incorrect so in that case we will not we should not generate a fish token and we should give error message back to the client application so let's perform this in the flow so this is the changes we need in service color policy so let's go ahead and include that policy in the flow so after checking the grant type we will have to attach this service color policy so let's add that so we would need the name of the policy so which is sci when validated user let's copy it and provide it here in order to attach it so this will call our backend db service and it will validate so after this we'll have to check whether the status code is 200 or 404 in order to do that let's go ahead and add another step here and let's have the condition because we want this step to be executed on conditional basis so let's add a condition condition so as we discussed the api method response will be available in this variable callout response so let's have let's copy this variable name and let's navigate to the flow so here if call out response dot status dot code is not equals 200 then it means the credentials are not correct so in that case we would send the custom error message back to the client application so in that case we can send send a custom rise fault we can send a custom error message using rise fault policy stating that username or password is incorrect so uh, let's create rise fault policy for that let's click plus icon in the policy section and add rise fault policy here it is rise fault We can name it as invalid credentials. So let's add it. And here I'm going to say status code 400 bad request. And I'm going to say invalid user name. A password so in the payload let's construct some custom error message let's have error tag and have the property Names which you want, so we can say error code. I'm giving 400.03.400.03 and error message as invalid user name or password so let's go ahead and attach this policy in our flow so here we'll have to attach it so let's add name name tag and provide the policy name 
so that's it with these changes let's save this as a new revision the revision 8 is saved let's go and deploy it in test environment All right, Revision 8 is saved and deployed it in the test environment. Now let's go ahead and provide the request from Postman. So we'll have to call our endpoint. So let's copy this. Let's copy, navigate it to Postman. And provide it here and we love to say our endpoint so we don't have to pass grant type from the query param so we have to pass the query param from here Grant underscore type. We have to pass as password. The reason for changing uh, the cases of username and password is uh, earlier we have tested uh, this eating uh, our WebP method directly, but now we have provided this username and password in the smaller case within the Apache Edge. So we will have to provide it in the smaller case, but when we extract uh, these variables in the service caller policy, we have given it in the upper case. If you could navigate and see. Okay, so let's navigate to the develop tab. And if you could see in the uh, service caller policy, we have provided in the upper case. So it is username and password. So which would match with our uh, backend property so this is username and password so the same we have given here but when we try to extract extract it will get it in the smaller cases so i have provided i have changed it in the smaller cases so with these changes let's go ahead and give the request let's see what happens It says 400 invalid grant type. All right, let's see what is wrong with this. So are we calling the right endpoint? Like this underscore token underscore password. Yes, the current type is password. Yes, which is correct. And we'll have to provide authorization enter. So let's give authorization enter. And I'm going to copy the authorization from the previous request. So let's copy it and provide. With these changes, let's keep the request. Let's see what error we're getting. It's a second invalid grant type. So let's navigate to a develop tab and see. The reason for this error is uh, here we are validating for grant types. So RF hyphen invalid grant type. So we love to see grant type variable, but instead of checking for grant type, we are checking for password field. That is why uh, this step is getting failed. So because we are passing, um, you know, uh, password as APG demo at one to three, so which is not equal to password. So that is why uh, APG edge throws this error. It gets invoked this step and it is giving the error message back to uh, our application. So 
instead of checking it for password we'll have to check for grant type so i'm going to change it to grant underscore type let's go ahead and change it So with these changes, let's save this. Now let's provide the request again from Postman and let's see what happens. So it says, invalid client error client identifier is invalid we have to provide authorization so we are providing authorization but still why it is not accepting it so let's copy this again and provide authorization editor let's give send This client ID is invalid, so let's investigate what is going wrong with this. So the reason for this error is we are passing invalid client ID or invalid secret key uh, to our Apigee Edge. So we have encoded this. So let's go ahead and check whether this is the valid uh, key. So let's navigate to Apache Edge and I'm just going to, you know, encode uh, client ID and client secret again. So let's encode it base 64 encoder online. So as we know, we'll have to encode client ID colon and secret key in order to pass this as authorization editor. So this is the recommended one from apg edge or else we can pass client id and client secret uh, from from url encoder which is not the recommended one so i'm just going to encode this so we are getting encoded value here so let's pass this from our request so let's delete this value and pass this value the encoded one and let's give the request let's see what we get here we go we have got the access token successfully from the server so we have authenticated our uh, username in the backend EPA service and we have generated access token on the other hand if we give any invalid username or password let's see what happens so I'm giving username as apg demo one two let's see what we get from apg edge here we go it says response code 404 is treated as error so what is the cause of this error let's navigate to happy gh ui navigate to develop tab you know api proxy we get to api demo proxy demo and navigate to develop tab so in the let's maybe get our flow so this is the flow which we uh, call our backend api so service caller policy will throw error if if it gets 404 from the respective backend api services so in order to so if it throws 404 the next step will not get executed but we are handling our uh, error in the next step so in order to pass it to the next step even though if this policy gets failed then we'll have to let this policy know okay even though if you uh, if you are getting failed then let's go go ahead and uh, invoke the next step in our flow so in order to do that let's navigate to sc Valid user policy, and if you could see continue on error state, now it is false. Let's turn it to true so that it will run our next step. 
where uh, we are uh, validating the response of backend AP services. So with these changes, let's save the revision and deploy it to uh, the test environment. So it is saved and it is deployed to test environment. And now provide the request from the Postman. Let's see what happens. Here we go. We are getting 400.03 invalid username or password. This is the expected one. So if username is invalid, we are getting. So on the other hand, I'm providing username properly and password I'm providing incorrect one. So let's see what happens now. Now we are getting the same response user invalid username or password. So now I'm giving invalid grant type. Let's see what happens. It says invalid grant type, which is the expected one. So now I'm providing all the values properly, the correct ones. Let's see whether we are able to generate access token properly. Here we go. We are able to generate access token properly after validating our user credentials at our backend API endpoint. So here if you could see scope is coming as null. In our next video, we'll discuss what are scopes and how it can be used within Apigee Edge. That's it in this video. I hope you enjoy this video. If so, please uh, click like button and subscribe our channel for more videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and have a good day.